Hi, this is Diane Norton, and I'm going to be presenting on Sheep and Goat Goals and Objectives for Cooperative Agreements today. So for Sheep and Goat Surveillance Goals, you have minimum, each state has minimum surveillance numbers that they, they are supposed to obtain. And to get to those numbers, you can go to our external SharePoint site for the Sheep and Goat Health Commodity. All of your designated scrapie epidemiologists have access to this, to this site, and state people can have access to this site as well. If you don't have access, please contact Dr. Chuck Gazer or myself, Diane Norton, for access. So to get to your, your surveillance minimums and to track your progress throughout the year, go to this website. And where I have the, the big blue arrow, you're going to go to the monthly scrapie reports, and you'll get and you can scroll through there, and you'll get something that looks like this. So this is for District One. You can see how it shows your your sheep and goat sampling minimums, and also as far as the monthly report is, how many samples have been collected with your tag state. So that will help you track your progress as you as you go through the fiscal year and let you know what your sampling minimums are. So for sheep and goat surveillance, um, all payments for testing are made through existing contracts. So no payments need to be made through the cooperative agreements, and you won't get money to to pay for any testing because USDA is already paying for those tests. Note that testing of suspect animals, scrapie suspect animals, will count towards your surveillance minimums. And we ask that you enter your investigation into the Veterinary Services Laboratory Submission System and into the, our, our database, the SCS scrapie database. If your state is at risk of not meeting your surveillance minimums, there's a lot of options that are available other than collecting at slaughter. Um, including live animal testing or whole head shipment to a centralized collection facility in Remington, Indiana. If you, um, we, Dr. Gazer and I can advise you on your specific situation um, if you give us a call and we can give you some ideas of how to, how to meet your surveillance minimums other than through slaughter surveillance. Um, if your state is meeting their surveillance minimums, that's great. But note that, that one of the current objectives of the sheep and goat health commodity is to collect all targeted animals that are presented at slaughter. So even if you've met your minimum, we want you to continue to collect samples, and our goal is to collect everything that, that meets our targeted surveillance or our targeted criteria. So for RSSS surveillance reporting in the in the cooperative agreement guidebook, there are we have some suggested reporting formats, and what I'm presenting here are are in that um, document. So briefly, for our we, there's two reporting reporting formats for suggested report re, suggested reporting formats for RSS surveillance reporting, and then another one for non-RSSS surveillance reporting. RSSS being regulatory scrapie slaughter surveillance. So RSSS is your collections at slaughter. Um, briefly, they just want to know, we want to know the number of animals sampled, the number of samples you've entered into the, the submission system, into the VSLS, the number of positive blocks you've identified through RSSS surveillance, and the RSSS sites and potential RSSS sites that you visited for reasons other than collecting samples. And then finally, the number of new RSSS sites added. For non-RSSS surveillance reporting, pretty, pretty similar. We'll want to know the number of suspect sheep you've investigated, the number of sheep or goats sampled, the number of flocks sampled, the number of flocks genotyped to identify animals for live animal testing, and the number of positive flocks identified. So moving on to education and outreach goals for the equine cervid and small ruminant commodity. Um, we'd like you to use education and outreach to increase ID and record keeping compliance. 
reporting and submission of clinical suspects, that includes CWD, scrapie, other foreign animal diseases or emerging diseases, to increase submission of found dead mature sheep for scrapie testing, and to increase producer awareness of scrapie-resistant genotype testing and other scrapie prevention strategies. Reporting for this objective, we'd like you to include the audience to which you spoke to, the number of stakeholders that were reached, and the name of the meeting or the training, if that's applicable. Finally, for preparedness and response, we'd like you to conduct FE investigations, including investigations for brucellosis, TB, or non-regulatory emerging diseases as directed by veterinary services. To also conduct disease response activities, including flock cleanup, indemnification, removal of animals, traceback investigations, post-exposure monitoring, et cetera, any kind of disease response activities. Also to increase the number of flocks listed in the scrapie national database that use official ID. So assigning new premises records and flock records with flock IDs in the SES scrapie. Also to monitor and enforce ID and record keeping compliance at concentration points, primarily markets. And as a note, identifications or devices are not to be purchased with cooperative agreement funds. I do have that asterisk because if you have some ideas on a pilot project that could be a value added, give us more information about a specific identification device such as retention, please talk to Dr. Gazer or myself and that might be an allowable expense. But in general, no ID devices are to be purchased with cooperative agreement funds without prior approval. Okay, so for reporting for preparedness and response, we'll want to know what investigations or other disease response activities you did, provide the disease of interest, and the activity performed. Pretty simple. For scrapie disease response activities, we use a standardized spreadsheet, the EPI and ID compliance report, so that can go in the EPI section of the EPI and ID compliance report. For ID compliance activities, how we want you to report differs depending on if you're compiling the EPI and ID compliance report quarterly or if you are not. So if you are compiling the EPI and ID compliance report, you're going to be reporting summary information. I've got examples of the reports coming up in the next couple slides. And for the states that don't comply the quarterly EPI and ID compliance report, you're going to report each inspection that you do at each market. So here is the example of reporting for each market. Each column represents a date that a market or other concentration point was visited. And we'll want you to record the total number of sheep that require ID at the time of inspection. And of those sheep, how many left the market with official ID. Ideally, you want those numbers to be equal so that your percentage of sheep that require official ID that leave the market with official ID is 100%. And similar numbers for the next two lines for goats. Whether they're actual or estimated counts. And if these next couple of items are not mandatory, but we'd like to get some kind of idea of how many animals are coming to the market that are supposed to be tagged, that have to leave the market tagged, but do not come into the market with official ID. There's nothing, you know, it's completely okay for the market to apply official ID as an agent for the producer. But we'd just like to start getting an idea or have an idea of how much the market really is, how much the market is tagging versus the producers taking that responsibility on themselves. I want to know if their records review is compliant. So you'll want to make sure that they're 
they're um, recording what they're supposed to be recording when they apply tags and on the information of the animals coming in and leaving. Um, the number of consi consignments that aren't in compliance, and if the compliance is level for sheep and goats is below 95%. If there's a no for um, the ID compliance level being below 95%, or I guess if it's a yes, for a compliance level being below 95%, we'll want some kind of a action that you've taken to correct that. Okay, so this is the individual EPI and ID compliance report. And this one is the summary. So this, the questions are, are pretty similar to the one I just showed you, but this is going to be additive for all the times you visited a given market throughout the, the reporting period. So each column is going to be, you know, cumulative number of sheep and times you've inspected, et cetera.